alpha is a good word. Alpha is uh, supposed to be good for everybody. But the bottom line is they have far too much alpha, and their dominant alpha is overriding their theta and preventing them from going to the depth of meditation that that individual needs. So they come to me for a profile, so they say, how can I use my light and sound device to my best advantage? Turn off the alpha, turn up the theta, turn up four frequencies, turn off seven frequencies, and that person will get more of what they need. Oh, absolutely. Is this good or bad? Yeah, symmetrical, thank you for reminding me of that. Symmetrical is optimum, but um, there are cases uh, where we, we, this is a fairly, <laughs> not quite that bad. You're always producing something there. But uh, someone may be doing mathematics. Um, producing beta and a little bit of other frequencies, but mostly left hemisphere beta to, to accomplish the mathematics. However, our standardized views of what takes place in which hemisphere needs a lot of revamping, because a lot of the standardized views of what takes place in, in each hemisphere is really metaphorical. Um, I had a, a person do, um, this is both math examples, but it's a good example because that's your kind of traditional mathematical thought in, in terms of, of the left hemisphere being the mathematical hemisphere. Uh, one person I measured was doing mathematics only in alpha waves, no beta waves or no beta waves to speak of. So I asked how, how he did his math and he said, um, he actually turned red. He looked very embarrassed at being found out. He said, well, every number has a color and orange and green equals 11, you know. <laughs> People have very individualized methods of cognition, very individualized ways of using, using their mind. Actually, the most dramatic mathematics was, was the person who did their math only in theta waves. And I've only seen it once. And it really floored me. I didn't know what to think. And I made them do it on paper so I could see if they were actually doing it and, and follow them. And again, they were a little embarrassed too. But they said that as a child, when they were learning to do their math, they needed glasses and they couldn't see the, he couldn't see the blackboard. And no one knew that he need, needed glasses. So he learned to do his math by reading his teacher's mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's a lot in the mind. I would like to demonstrate on Alexis if you would like to come and, and uh, come up here and let me uh, wire you up while I'm talking. We'll get we'll get a show of some brain waves going. Alexis has volunteered to to get wired. <coughs> While I'm doing this, I'll talk a little bit. I'll try and talk and wire at the same time. I still use electrode gel. I don't have the newfangled dry electrodes with me, so we're going to have to goo you a little bit. Um, there's a lot of different applications for, for this kind of work. I've already mentioned the, the corporate executive type of work that I've done. Um, it's interesting to have two EEGs and look at the interrelationship of the brainwave frequencies. And we've done quite a lot of, we, in England, we did a lot of research with healers. Healing is legal in England. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so. So we had available to us a wide variety of different kinds of healers, and, and we availed ourselves of that and went to the two federations of healers, the British Federation and the National Federation of Healers. Um, and we found an interesting thing. We found one federation healed in the right hemisphere, 
and one federation healed in both hemispheres. And I have no idea why the people in the different federations were attracted to each other to join that federation. But they did, and there was this, this commonality of the people in the, in the different federations. The two federations since I've left England have merged into one. <laughs> so I'd be interested to go back and see what brainwaves they use. Um, but the pattern of healing that we have seen is primarily the awakened mind pattern. It's the pattern that we see the most often in healing. The awakened mind pattern is not a static pattern, and it is not just one pattern. There are many different awakened mind patterns, and in some ways, um, if I were to take your profile and want to look at what your optimum pattern is, your awakened mind pattern would be specific to you, depending on what your profile is. One of the things that I'm trying to do right now with uh, a computer programmer in California is to develop an algorithm. And I'm, I'm writing software to try to do this profile uh, on software so that I don't have to sit there and look at the EEG. So hopefully, sometime in the next year or two, there'll be a software program where you can put the EEG on, go through a specific routine, and come out with not only what your profile is, but what the steps are that you need to take to get towards, closer towards your optimum pattern, your specific awakened mind pattern. There are many different forms of those combinations of beta, alpha, theta, and delta. I heard someone out there say the word channeling, and indeed it is interesting to, to measure channels, and it's very interesting. I was at a conference on the mind and channeling, and there is a specific pattern that I've seen a lot in channeling when I've measured channels. And I was asked to measure a, a, a channel, and this person was channeling in pure beta. And I had to change the subject real quick. <laughs> it's, uh, there are certain, if, if the ideas are just coming from the beta waves, they are not coming from the depth of the unconscious or the, the subconscious. Um, there are also a lot of tapes and uh, audio tapes and all sorts of techniques that purport to accomplish particular things to get you in one hemisphere or the other frequency or one specific frequency. And uh, there is a machine that exists that, that can measure whether those tapes are doing what they actually say they're doing. So there's some interesting research that's still yet to be done. What, what I started talking about before I lost my train of thought was the healing. And the interrelationship between the healer and the patient is one of the very interesting things we measured, too. Um, watching the brainwave patterns of the healer start to transfer as the healer and the healy entrained with each other, and as the patient gradually took on the brainwave patterns of the of the healer. Um, and this works interestingly in, in other arenas. Um, couples therapy is very interesting with two mind mirrors. It's, it's fascinating. I'll, I'll do this in just a second. I want to draw one pattern that's real interesting of uh, a couple I was working with. They were arguing. <laughs> he was arguing. I'm going to put him over here. He was arguing like this. And she was arguing like that. And the more they argued, he would go like that, and she would go like that. And it was fascinating. They would just jab at each other with their brain waves. And the more he sent his beta out, the more she sent her alpha out. And they had no idea why they were missing. <laughs> 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 
And I explained it to them. I showed it to them on the two machines, and they got it. And for a while, they calmed down, and they both got more similar patterns, and they communicated and related to each other. They did, however, buy two mind mirrors rather than one. So I, I'm not, I don't quite know what happened to them. But <laughs> it was an interesting one. The other, the other interrelationship story here that is interesting is interspecies communication. And I've, I've had some interesting experiences with horses and riders in the measurement of brain waves and the measurement of, oops, you okay yeah. there? Yeah, got it on. Okay. Of horses and their trainers, and also horses in a therapeutic riding center, and how the horses' brain waves affected autistic children, and how which horse was chosen for which child to ride on would affect the child's brain waves. And through looking at the uh, brainwave patterns of the child, you could see that actually the old nag that they were putting the most disabled children on was disorganizing their brainwave pattern, while the, the sharp, smart, aware, young, that they thought dangerous horse was helping the brainwaves of the child to organize. We also saw which direction that we move the horse in is going to affect the brainwave. So if you go in a clockwise motion, this particular child is going to do something different than in a counterclockwise motion. So in doing this research, we could help find the, the children um, the right riding patterns. There's one other story from that, this particular experience that really is, is dramatic. There was a, a teenager with cerebral palsy, and he was very uh, handicapped. He could not communicate verbally, and his body was very twisted. And he was obviously in a lot of emotional and mental pain uh, with this. Yet he volunteered to be an example for this demonstration I was giving to 80 therapists. Uh, physical therapists for uh, disabled children. And I went through this whole thing of drawing the awakened mind pattern and, and explaining what it was all about. And then I wired up this boy, and there he was with the perfect awakened mind pattern. Just perfect. Just, just glowing. And everybody was stunned. And I said, do you realize that you have the brain waves that, that everybody wants? And he said, I know. He knew that, that he had this inside him. There was not a dry eye in this house. And his mother was totally vindicated. For 17 years, she'd known he was a special child and that he had abilities that were far beyond what he was considered to have. And all of a sudden, his whole life changed because he was validated. And he was then treated in accordance with, with who he really was inside and inside rather than what his, his warped body was showing. So it was, a, it was really a very dramatic, I'm gonna need to get you to move a little closer here. It was a wonderful experience. Okay, we are wiring in Alexis. And I have an attenuator setting here that will alter the sensitivity level. So what we can see here is her left hemisphere. I'm sorry, you can't. You can see it on the video later. Okay. Left hemisphere and right hemisphere. This is the right over here. We can see her delta waves coming out fairly strong in relationship to the other frequencies. Or they were until I started talking about them. <laughs> Did you notice that? <laughs> see the beta coming out then? Okay, why don't you close your eyes for a minute? I know this is, uh, I want to say one thing before we do anything else. This is a demonstration. These are, are Alexis's brain waves being demonstrated under a very awkward situation. So this is not your brain waves that they would be if you were sitting in meditation or normally. This is your brain waves with a couple of hundred people looking at them. 